heck is a GMO? What is selective breeding? And what are you? Well, unfortunately, they don't make a 23andMe DNA test for apples. At least not that I'm aware of. Maybe there is. What's your DNA? I just took a DNA test. Turns out I'm 100%. 100% what? GMO or selectively bred? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today because there is a huge difference between these terms and a lot of people get them confused. So first what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what each one actually means, starting with selective breeding. Selective breeding goes a little bit like this. Oh, I really like this apple. I'm going to take the seeds from this apple, which is the best one from this tree. And I'm going to breed a new tree. Oh, but this tree is really good at being disease resistant. So I'm going to take both these apples and breed them together. I know that seems really simple, but at its core, that's pretty much what selective breeding is. It is just the idea of taking all the traits that you want in a crop and breeding them to the next generation. So whether that's size, sweetness, you can go after disease resistance, any trait that you are looking to get more out of, you pick the finest crop from that and you breed it with something else that you want. What ends up happening is over time as you collect those seeds, you're gonna get those traits bred into that crop. That's pretty much all there is to selective breeding. You see it in livestock all the time. That's what they do with cattle. They take certain attributes of a bull, they breed it with a female and crops are no different. You take certain male aspects of corn, breed it with certain female aspects of corn and you end up with a selectively bred crop and you continue doing that for hundreds if not thousands of years. That's exactly how we ended up with over 200 different varieties of corn and over 10,000 different varieties of tomatoes. It was all done throughout thousands of years through selective breeding. That is until the very first genetically modified organism was available for sale in 1994 in the United States, a tomato. The groundwork for this amazing breakthrough was actually set in 1973 when two biochemists, Dr. Boyer and Dr. Cohen, actually inserted DNA from two different types of bacterium into one another. That brings us to our definition of a modern GMO, which in scientific terms means a genetically modified organism. Now, in a lab, a GMO is created and what they do is they take genes from different fruits that they like. Again, these same traits as in selective breeding. You have traits like size, sweetness, maybe bitterness, and a lot of times it comes down to disease or insect uh, resistance. They take all these different traits, they put them together in a lab. Sometimes they'll even delete, take out traits that they don't want. They combine them together. Oh, I almost forgot. Sometimes they even throw in new genes from entirely different species. They put it all in together and out comes an entirely new variety of whatever species that is that's crazy. It's got a lot of, um, you know, quirks to it, but it's, it's a GMO. That's, that's basically what a GMO is. One of the most common GMO crops, the first thing that comes to most people's mind is corn. And that's because we eat a lot of it. We use it in a lot of products and a lot of corn has been genetically modified. Now, how it's been modified, they'll actually take that soil bacterium and they'll add that to the DNA sequence and that bacterium allows this corn plant to create its own natural insecticide. But probably the most popular uh, GMO aspect of corn is Roundup Ready. Now, Roundup is a glyphosate and what they've done is they've taken another bacterium they have added that trait into the corn plant and now you can, it, it basically makes it resistant to glyphosate and now you can spray your corn with glyphosate. It doesn't affect the corn plant, but it affects all the other weeds around it. That's just a really basic example of what GMO crops look like today. Now in this video, I'm not gonna tell you what to think, how to think, or even what I think, but what we are gonna look at is some of the pros and cons of both selective breeding and genetically modified organisms. The pros of selective breeding are that first off, it is natural. This happens, takes place in the wild. There's no lab work ever needed. You do this all out in a field. It can take place in the wild. It also can be sped up a little bit by farmers helping out but there's nothing unnatural about it, which makes it very familiar. People are used to selective breeding. We see it in dogs, we see it in livestock, we see it in fruits and vegetables that we eat every day. So there's not a lot of controversy there. The cons are that it is really, really slow. It takes a long time because it is natural. If you're only getting one crop every single year that you end up passing down, it's gonna take a really long time before you're gonna see a big difference, especially in things like fruit trees, where one fruit tree can take several years in order to produce. Just takes a really long time. 
The other thing is that you are limited in the amount of traits that you can continue to add in. If you're not adding any other traits from additional species, you're not able to really mix up that um, product a whole lot. And any negative traits in that crop can get passed down to the next generation. We see this a lot in health issues specifically with dogs. The pros of GMOs is that they are way faster. Because this is taking place in a lab, it is so precise, you can get exactly what you want out of it really, really quickly. And so you're not sitting around waiting for things. That allows you to address global food issues a lot faster. Things like disease, drought, you make your crops way more resilient. The cons of genetically modified organisms is that there's a lot of ethical and environmental concerns that people bring up. Not a lot of long-term studies have been done and those studies that have been done are often paid for by the companies that create these. Now that is the next con is that there's a huge high input cost in order to even get these started. So the people that create GMO products have a lot of money behind them and they are all owned by large big companies and there's not a lot of them that create these genetically modified organisms. So there's a little bit of a uh, monopoly there that can raise a lot of issues. When it comes to regulation, they couldn't be more opposite. Selective breeding is really unregulated. You can do it at home because it's seen as a more traditional thing. There's not a lot of oversight, not a lot of scientific data, not a lot of things to back up any of the claims or any of the crops that get produced through selective breeding. It's all just trial and error. But on the flip side, genetically modified organisms are heavily regulated by the United States and other countries around the world. Because selective breeding and genetically modified organisms are so similar and the fact that they're both altering the genetic makeup of food, many people often get them confused and they attribute certain things as being genetically modified when they're not. In reality, there's only 14 crops that are available for GMO use here in the United States to be sold commercially. And what's fascinating is that many of them aren't even on large scale, like the pink pineapple, the Arctic uh, apple. Most of those you aren't actually gonna find. They're very limited in their retail space. The rest of them, like normal crops, alfalfa, soybean, corn, those make sense. But then you have a lot of fruits and salmon somehow got thrown in there. Fruits and trees like bananas here. In life, it's important that you understand definitions and that there's a lot of clever tricks that are played in marketing terms and how food gets labeled. Labels like organic, labels like pasture raised, and even labels like non-GMO. If you see a non-GMO cotton candy, well, that's just you following for a clever marketing trick. If you wanna be an educated consumer, don't GMO. Hit subscribe for more fun content like this.